Hello everybody, Reggie Time here with a live play 10 cent anti short deck session. Um three tables. Three very good tables, my I add. And um yeah, looking forward to getting stuck in. I didn't play an awful lot yesterday. I said in yesterday's brief wrap-up video that I wasn't going to be playing as much this week due to my work commitments. Um but I missed my midnight session last night. I didn't play the midnight session. Normally I play a session from, say, midnight to 2 a.m. Didn't do that because I was too busy winning a multi-table tournament on um, Sky. I won their £20 mega stack for about 350 quid, which is nice. And the nicest thing about that is that it's now made sure that, um, as my friend Kieran pointed out this morning, that I'm very unlikely to have a losing month now, which is delightful. Take some of the pressure off because even though it doesn't really matter from like, when, do we have a losing month or not in the big scheme of things, um, just from a like, pride perspective of saying I'd very rarely have losing months, it's nice to take that pressure right off because we're about $100 down this month at this game, but being £350 up in a, in a tournament, um, even though I've lost a little bit of tournaments earlier in the month, it's still it's just not going to be a losing month now unless something goes disastrously wrong. I don't know the exact figures, but I'm definitely up for the month at the moment. And given that I'm planning on winning at this game for the rest of the month, it seems unlikely. Um, so that's that's good news. We've got um, a change to our tagging system now to help me... Um, plan my hands out better at this game. We have now pink tags are uh, anybody with a 15% or higher PFR. That is all it takes now to get a pink tag. Uh, then we've got blue tags, which are just loose passive players. Yellow tags, which are very like pretty damn tight players. And... Um, Right, anyway, we'll get back onto that in a moment. So I think we're going to limp shove this 10 jack suited against someone who opens too wide in the caller. So we're going to go with the limp shove with the 10 jack suited. We're going to just call the king jack suited because the pre flop raise is much smaller and it's coming from a player who almost never raises. And we're going to fold the king jack here. We get the 10 jack suited in and we do not win. We got called by Queen 10 and King 7 all in pre-flop. So I'm happy with my jam. Um, it just didn't work out. There you go. I mean, Queen 10 off suit is just never a call there. Um, and now there's King 7 off. So our limp jam is pretty good in my opinion. It just happened not to fold out the type of hands it should absolutely fold out. So there you go. Um going to fold the king jack here. We are up some chips at this table so far. We made quad aces against a rivered flush. Uh, a6 suited on the button. This guy is probably going to let us see a flop. So we're going to complete on the button. Versus some guy who opens pretty wide. He then makes a large C bet and then he over jams. So I would just basically a naked flush draw here. Yeah, it's close, I guess. Problem being is they could have some of our outs blocked. I mean, our naked flush draw's got about 30%. Our backdoor straight draws. We're maybe getting somewhere near the right price here. Maybe, but I'm going to let it go. Here we're going to reshove the ace-queen and be delighted about it against a guy who's playing like an absolute maniac. Played 84-41. Ace-queen is the nuts here in this situation. We're up against the jack-10. We don't want to see an eight or a king. And we don't. And we get the double. Over well, the tens here. This table is literally off the charts good. I'm going to see another three-way all in here. Um, yeah. 
Not sure what this guy, these guys I'm on board with. This guy, no idea. We're going to raise the set of tens here on the very coordinated board against the incredibly passive player who's just led into four players. And we're going to hope he doesn't have a set of kings. We're also now going to hope he doesn't have ace jack because we're ripping the turn. We're going to take a little stab here with our open ender. He has 10 6. Well, sir. Well, I never. We picked up a flush draw here to go with our straight draw, but the nine pairing makes me not want to barrel this turn. And just try and realise our equity, which we kind of do. We make a straight. Now we're going to bet like two thirds pot and fall to a raise, I think. This guy's now open for 50. Oh, he might be tilted. I don't know. But he's got a 3% PFR, so we're just going to make a tight fold with the ace queen, which some of you guys will be tearing your fucking head out at. Because if there wasn't an element of tilt in there, then ace queen's a terrible fold, but I'm just going to trust that 3%. And ace queen against a 3% range is not doing well. Here we have a flush draw and a gut shot, so we're going to pay the minimum to try and see our see our equity out to the river, and we miss, and he checks, and I am not going to bluff, and I should have bluffed, but we chopped the pot anyway. With two aggressive players to act behind us, we're just going to limp the ace king and look to put a limp raise in. That doesn't work out. And then this guy just goes all in. We have top pair and we are going to turbo muck it. We would have, of course, backed into the flush, but never mind. We have the ace king again. We've limped the kings over here and we've gone multi way with a very unsatisfactory flop. So we're not going to be looking to play a big pot here. <clears throat> oh, that's a mistake. I thought that was five. Oh dear, I just put infinite antis in with queen nine off suit, which is not good. And then we flop and open and straight draw and draw. Ugly. Ugly, 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 because now we just got to pay this off. And I don't want to. But we've got no choice. Because we have an open end there and the pot's already huge. This all stems from our pre flop mistake. Are we going to get bailed out? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Uh, he's got every right to feel pissed off with that, but never mind. I'll live with it. Because obviously, clearly, I'd never, never, ever calling there. Pre-flop. I thought it was a five chip. But for some reason, I just thought it was a limp. I saw the five and thought, well, that's a limp. Let's see a flop. So that was a bad mistake that turned out all right in the end. Uh Ace nine suited here versus a small isolation raise. We're going, to be, <coughs> we're going to be taking a flop. If this was, say, a 50 chip raise, we probably would have folded. I think we need to defend versus this size. We are completely missing. We are giving up. We'll stab here with our top pair, just because why not? We get checked, shoved on. We have the easiest fold in the history of the world. Let's 
Okay, raises. We are going to three bet. We're not going to three bet all in there. His raise doesn't really justify us shoving. Just a seven chip ante. Don't want to be jamming or jamming over a seven chip ante. We pick up the cold call on the button, which is disturbing. <clears throat> now we have like a pretty low SPR. We have no choice. We just go with our hand now. We are ahead. Are we going to stay there? We are going to stay there. Happy days. Happy, happy days. Things are coming up reg. Everything is coming up reg so far today. And I, for one, am not going to complain about it. Bottom well, pair and a good shot, she's going to go right in the bin. Queen 10 off. Um, this guy probably won't raise, this guy might, but we're going to try and see a flop four-handed. Not calling raises unless it's a tiny raise. Here with the king eight, we're going to complete. Here with the top two pairs, we're going to pot it. Holding the king eight. Holding the 10 8. Got called in two places. The ace comes. So now we lose to some of the two pairs. We're already dead to King Jack. I don't think our hand is strong enough to bet again here. I'll just a bluff catcher at this point. And I think I probably will bluff catch the river. Oh, I don't need to bluff catch the river because this guy just left. Midway through the hand, he was like, ah, fuck this. I am out of here. With the two queens against two guys who don't raise too much. We're going to be playing this for a raise. Get call. We've got top set on a monotone flop. Raises. Whatever. Here we go. Set over set. He's gone for the run it three times, but he's only got one win in the deck. I like that. And we win all three. Which is something we love to see. Uh, this guy could be spewing his brains out. He's going to flick it in with the A7. And we do the win. Overlimp the jacks here. Now he's we're gonna try and make sure there's no mega deep stacks behind us because we are a bit deeper, there isn't. So now we're just gonna jam the jacks. Hope they fold everybody else out and get it in against this dude who actually has aces. Which is pretty hilarious that he turns up with aces off those stats and that stack, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Especially when we make straights on rivers. Funny thing, variants couldn't win a pot for love or fucking money last week, and then I binked a tournament last night, and I haven't missed a fucking beat so far today. On terms of like getting lucky, what a peculiar and fickle mistress variants truly is. Uh. Just calling here because I don't think this guy calls with worse. We got bottom full house. Don't think he calls with worse if we raise. So we're just gonna call. 
I know that the the jacks out there to make like a one line straight, but I don't think this guy is a player to call a river race with just a straight there. Could be wrong. But that's how it feels to me. With two guys behind us who aren't particularly aggressive, we're gonna open the ace queen off for a raise. Go with the C bet of around 65%. down catching up with retagging a lot of the players this guy's a funny one he's like it looks like his approach is similar to the approach I had when I started playing this game looks like he's got a very much like a no limit hold'em approach to the game. Um, he's probably going to end up being good enough to realise that this strategy is shit. Um, but at the moment, it looks like he's losing. 34 21, reasonable stats for no limit hold'em. Not good stats for this game. He's, he's clearly tight, but too aggressive. He's got, he just loves open ripping in spots as well. So it looks to me like someone who's newish to the game and has just got the wrong ideas about it at the moment, but who will probably be good enough to eventually get the right ideas if he sticks with it. But he's got a very unusual tag, which is red tag. No one's red tagged in these games for me, but he is. And I'm not sure why. I guess he's just tagged red to remind me that he's someone different to the usual types of players that you see in these games. We're going to try and see a flop here with the Jack-8 suited. We do see a flop. We particularly enjoy the flop. Certainly not going to call the bet. We want to try and play a pot with this guy. This guy's pretty passive on the button. So there's a reasonable chance we're going to see a flop for five antis with our jack eight. Which we did, but we didn't see a flop that we enjoyed. Again here with passive players behind, we're going to try and limp into this pot with the King Jack off suit. If we had these guys behind us at this table, we wouldn't be trying to limp with the King Jack. It's just too likely one of them will raise and we have a hand that can't really raise call. But given there's just relatively like not that relatively passive players behind. Um, that's kind of one of the new things I've been doing since I put some a lot of thought into my game at the weekend. Uh, looking behind me before, like, some hands are going to be hands that we're going to be able to play easily. Um, all the time with, with certain players behind us. And the same hand with different players behind us is going to be a hand that we're just never going to be looking to play. The King Jack, <coughs> King Jack absolutely fits into that description. Um, whereas, you know, when we think we're, we're likely to see a flop for the five chips... A high percentage of the time we're gonna be we're gonna be looking to get in there and see flops and if we think there's not as good a chance that we're gonna be able to see cheap flops then we're gonna fold a lot more of these types of hands. 
It just a, it makes me pay more attention pre-flop, which is absolutely what we should be doing. Not going to bet the bottom two pair here on this board. We're almost certainly going to try and see a turn card, if, as long as the action doesn't go crazy behind us. In position, we stab this for sure, but when we're out of position, to two players and in a four-player to the flop situation. I'm going to try and exercise a little bit of pot control from out of position. And now we're pretty much done with it. Ace 10 off. Now this guy's in. We're going to try and get in. A good shot on the back door flush draw. Not enough going on for me want to want to bet into three opponents. Four if you can't this guy who's checked. Queen suited. This guy's going to do something crazy, I think. And this deep, I'm not sure how I'm going to respond. 100 big, 100 antis deep, we'd just be limit shoving over this dude who's shown a marvellous proclivity to just get it in pre flop with a very wide range of hands. Shout out to Jusenberg for the, um, for the use of proclivity there. He used it on his stream last night, and I fucking loved it. He did go on to use the term Stinky Bell End, which I still loved. I loved as much as I love proclivity. But, it, you know, when, when you're watching someone stream and you can use the word proclivity, it's unusual to then hear the word Stinky Bell End. St the word Stinky Bell End come out of their mouth too. But I loved it all the same. Um, so, yeah. Go Jusenberg. Here is one of the people I am in a chat group with. His name is Jack Jack, but he's actually called Tom. So there you go. Maybe he's got a child called Jack. Maybe he's got two children and he's called them both Jack. Who knows? Who knows? Well, pretty confident he hasn't got two children that he's called Jack. And if he has, sure they're not all 20. I'm um, going to limp the jacks here, but this guy likes going all in a lot and we're not going to call. This guy likes going all in a lot and we're deep, so I'm not sure that I want to shove if he raises. Do get to see a flop, though, and we flop a set, which is nice. And we're going to. Tr There's enough aggression around this table with these two. So we're going to go try and get a check raise in here. I'm not one for slow playing in this game. We're in a multi-way pot with, with a couple of players who like throwing chips around. I think it's more than fine. Um, we're going to make a pretty damn big raise. Because this guy's clearly absolutely of his tits and probably isn't folding a king for any for any number and by using this size we just get to jam turns didn't expect this dude to come along but whatever hope he doesn't have the queen 10 
He does have the Queen 10. It's unfortunate, but never mind. Well, he just keeps betting five. I think he's almost certainly he's got a jack here. But well, he just keeps betting five chips, but not going to fold. Feels like a jack to me. And he was a jack. Uh, right, so this dude here, he's very tight, has isolated. This guy who is manic. Do we set mine here? We probably do. I think we probably do. I just hope that we get to see a flop and without. I mean, if he rams it in, then he somehow folds, then we have an easy call, but. Yeah. I've got a rule typically where I do not limp call 10 anti-bets. I either jam over them or I fold. That is usually my rule. And this wouldn't typically be a hand I'd want to limp jam against this guy. So that would be a limp fold a lot of the time for me, for 10 antis. But this guy being in the pot just swung me into calling. Here we have an ace ten. I could very much use some protection. I really do not want to bet fold this turn. If we bet, he raises all in. I just want to see a nice, safe river, I think. Check back and see a safe river. That's not a safe river. He bets half pot. Snap bets half pot. Is he value betting king queen here? Or King 10. Who knows? Who fucking knows? I'm going to call this min race here. We've flopped two pairs. So we are now going to be wagering the rest of our chips on this flop. Behind to seven six and sets at the moment. On the board this wet, and we can get called some very large bets called from some very loose players. And if they don't call and we just pick the pot up, then that's fine too because our hand is pretty vulnerable to a plethora of draws. Mm. Let me take it down, and that's just fine by me. You just limp much over my life with the ace king, even more so given we haven't fucking topped our cunting stack up. Uh, do we want to go for the ISO here, or do we want to try and limp raise against this dude? I'm going to try and go for the limp raise. And isn't the guy we want to be... See, this makes me want to fold, but then this guy comes along committing dead money. He's going to... When I go all in, the other two are now going to go all in. And hopefully this guy's 300 chips in dead money. Mitigates the fact 
that I'm sometimes going to be fucking crushed by this guy. So, turned out all right in theory. Ten ball! Ten ball! No ten ball. And the minute that guy makes it 88, you know, like, I'm out of there. I'm not, I'm, if this guy doesn't come along, I'm just making a highly exploitable fold against somebody who's just, I mean, even though, man, to be fair though, we had 45% equity there against, against pocket kings without ace king. So maybe we just have to take our lumps sometimes against these guys. But I would have folded. Um, and perhaps that's a mistake. But when a 36 slash 8 just makes it fucking 18 antis pre flop, what do we think he's doing that with, you know? Um, but I, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Ace King's still going to have to be a call out against him. And the fact this guy comes in and just puts some extra money in the pot just makes it more, makes it more tempting for us, gives us a better price. A limp raise fail with the pocket aces. And we're going to bet and kind of just hope to take it down. Is that a good turn or a bad turn? I don't feel like it's a particularly good turn. That doesn't feel like it's a particularly good river. I think we can, can we just block here? We're going to try. Oh, block bet success. Block bet success. Um, right, well, this has all gone a little bit fucking haywire. But out of here. We are out with our two nines. Didn't want to see a flop anyway. Who wants to see a flop? Not me. Not interested. Oh, motherfucker. This game is now shit. Zero interest in playing with three yellow tags. No offense, Tom. Um, we do have this guy who's willing. My eyes out what used to be 69. Is it worth sticking around for this one guy? I don't think. Oh, just about to leave. Tom had the same idea too. So Tom leaving, which is the correct move, but because he left before this guy turned up. And then both of these guys showing up has all of a sudden made this a much nicer table. Look how much this table's changed. Like literally one hand ago, there was a yellow tag here and an empty seat. And now the yellow tag's left and we have two... Absolute nut jobs around. And all of a sudden, we've gone from right, we're out of here to fucking hell. Lock the doors. See, this is where I think I have. Big edge, even against regulars. You saw this guy just make it 88 with pocket kings. This guy's just like open raising to 90. Um, and even though these are guys are like the regulars in the game, if you will, like the, the, the for want of a better word, better players. And I was making some of these same mistakes just a week or so ago, so I'm not going to be overly critical of them. Um, not by any stretch, because I was going for the massive raises, this and the other. Um, it's just not the right way to play the game. I'm starting to become aware of that. I'm not saying I know the correct way to play the game, but I'm eyeing, I'm ironing out quite a lot of the incorrect things that I was doing, which could only be a good thing. Um, so when I look at... I mean, we're always beating these guys because they're just terrible. 
And if I think I'm already like better than these guys too, because they do some. I mean, it should just a nine, like an eighteen chip, an eighteen anti raise from that position, just should not be a thing. It just shouldn't be a thing, especially when like the when the the one guy you desperate to be put at the table is already out. So when I see like the 88 raise, the 90 raise, stuff like that, and that's coming from the players in the game who are probably some of the better ones, then, you know, I look at the game and think, yeah, I've even got like a, in my opinion, a small edges against these guys, big edges against them, good edges against them, small edges against them. There's very few players in the game, in these particular games, in these 10 cent anti games, who I feel out outmatched against. Very, very few. Um, so there's definitely big edges in this game, which is why, even though we had a bad week last week, um, I know I, why I had a bad week. It was more than, mostly because of that one day where I adopted a diabolical strategy and simultaneously ran about as bad as I can ever remember running. So I can understand why that happened. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um... Yeah, it's just a call, isn't it? It's just a call. And we are good. We'll go for the running three times. He'll reject it. And then it's hope not to see a queen on the flop. Now we don't want to see a king. Oh, fuck off. Oh, fuck off. And there you're like, oh, that's a bad beat. It's not a bad beat. That's a 60-40. And that's what that is. That right there is a 60-40. Um, uh, so I've just viewed them as flips. I don't even see them as like, oh, I've been sucked out on there. It's just a coin flip, and we didn't win it. Uh, we could limp shove here against this guy, the 15%. Pre-flop raise. But I don't think King Jack suited makes a particularly good limp shoving hand. But it is a very playable hand against this particular opponent, so we're going to call. I'd rather like Jack-10 suited. I'd probably much rather jam that, because Jack-10 suited is going to be doing fine against his, like, King-Queens, his Ace-Kings, whereas King-Jack's going to be fucked by them. Um, so, yes. That's why we elected just to call. And there you go. Jack-10 would have smashed his fucking queen-queen to pieces. Queen-queen. Well, it doesn't matter. It's not a decision. This guy's raising 44% of fans. He doesn't this time. Of course he doesn't this time. And we want him to. And you've got these two guys behind and you don't get the pre-flop raise. To jam over. That is disappointing. That is disappointing. How have you not found a race, sir? How have you not found the race there? So, yeah, going back to the point I was making, <clears throat> I think I have edge. Uh, well, I clearly have massive edge against the pool in general because there's just too many absolute whoppers. But um, I think I have edge against every player type too. And um, I think as the weeks go by, I mean, my strategy has been become more clearly defined as the weeks go on. You know, I, I do some things that work well, I do some things that don't work well, and we're kind of like throwing out the stuff that we doesn't work well, and we're keeping the stuff that does work well. And then... Now, this week, I'm kind of trying to add another layer in terms of, like, well, certain things work well against certain player types and certain things work well against other player types. So then it's like looking at the individual table dynamics and having, like, a strategy for individual tables rather than, like, a holistic strategy for all tables. At some tables, I'll be limping hands, which will be a raise at other tables from the same position, etc. Um, and that can only... Well, look at this guy. just made a massive raise again and showed us the kings again, like we didn't know already. Um, 
it can only be good. It can only board well for my having an awful lot of success in this exact player pool. Double cut shot here with our Queen Jack. We'll take a stab. Got one of those 60 40s again. Are we going to win this one? Of course, we're not. Of course, we're not going to win the 60 40. Come on, Reg. This guy just decides to go with check call flop, donk pot turn. Congratulations on your King Jack, sir. I am utterly delighted for you. Come on, Poya. Don't let me down. Don't let me down, Poya. Click that race. Oh, no, don't click that fucking race button then. Don't race, Poya. I don't care. I don't care that you haven't fucking raised. And I don't care that we've now got a fucking flop that heavily favours you two. I don't care about any of those things. No, I'm not even going to bet. I'm just going to check call. Not even going to bet. Because there's just too many turns I do not want to deal with against these two opponents. I think now we're going to bet. Try and get some value. And I'm calling here against a guy with the 3% pre-flop raise who's decided to squeeze on the button. And now we're going to be check folding on this flop. Lots of draws have missed here. Some hands have improved, like Jack X and now improved past us. I think we're probably going to check call here. Unless it goes with some crazy sizing. There's too many draws have missed, I think. Like all the straight draws have missed. All the flush draws have missed. And happy days. Bluff catching is not something I do very often in these games because just all too often, because of the way the game works, people just have good hands. Uh, but that seemed like a very good spot to <clears throat> bluff catch against that particular opponent. We now have a top pair, second up flush draw and a good shot. And watch me check it. Watch me happily check that hand. This guy who never puts a chip in a pot without the nuts has bet 40 chips. Not ready to fold just yet, but we're probably going to fold rivers unimproved. Well, we are. We just are going to fold rivers unimproved. Because this guy just doesn't put chips in with bad hands. Oh, no, it turns out he did that time. Only he knew that I was folding to like one third pot there. Only he knew. He could have. He could have done a bluff then. He could have done a bluff. Yeah, this guy's strategy just literally seems to be limp or all in. That's it. That's the strat. I'm either limping or I'm all in. And there's nothing in between. Uh, but as I said, I do believe this guy eventually will will um, become a, probably a reasonably good player. I'm not going to try and take the pot down pre with the ace yes jack on the button. It was tempting. It was tempting. But being limp raised there would stink with that hand. Uh, uh, not going to try and see a flop with the... Jack 10 with two 
wildish players behind us. This guy's just all in again. And we should almost treat this guy like a fish because he's like raising way, way, way too many hands in this game. We should almost treat him like a fish. It wasn't for the fact he was like overall tight. <clears throat> he would absolutely be getting the pink tag because at the moment he's just, you know, he's playing badly. I think we can raise a 10 jack suited against this fellow. Try and steal position pre flop. We failed. He's gone with the limp jam. I think jack 10 suited against this guy. I think, yeah, we have to. There's, there's a bit too much dead money in the pot. Once we decide to raise, I don't think we can raise fold against this guy. With a hand like Jack-10, it's going to be a coin flip against that type of holding. And we drag it down. That will look like a suck out to the people who aren't familiar with this game, but Jack-10 suited versus Ace-King is pretty much a direct coin flip in this game. Which is why I was like, oh shit, the bed. We have to call now. Just because we had like our 50 chips, his 50 chips. So there's like maybe <coughs> 120 chips in there that was that you could count as dead money. So for a coin flip, and there's already like 60, not 60, what the fuck am I talking about? 25, 20 to 25 antis in there in... <coughs> Well, maybe not dead money, because maybe his money isn't dead. Maybe he's calling too. But basically, when there's money in the pot that, that are laying you a better price, that is laying you a better price than evens, and you think you're the coin flip, then the money just needs to go in, doesn't it? It's just bad poker to fold. It's just bad poker to fold. Uh, again, because of the presence of this guy and because this guy has made it only eight antis, we can limp call with this hand. And again, this is a strategy that I might well modify at some point. But at the moment, my rule is pretty much um, limp and then anything we limp, if it's like less than a 10 anti pre flop raise, we're usually going to try and see a flop. If it's more than a 10 anti pre flop raise, we're usually going to be into raise. Jam or fold mode. I mean, we hope this guy's got jacks here. We hope he's got jacks. Although I think he probably overlimps jacks a decent amount of the time. Whatever it was. Whatever it was he had, we won. Maybe it was Ace King. Yep, more likely to be Ace King than Jax, actually. So I think this guy probably just overlimps Jax most of the time. Maybe maybe he raises because this guy limped. But um, as you can tell, by the way, I'm, I'm talking to you in this video, and I hope it's coming across. I'm just putting way more thought into everything that I'm doing now than I was at like, the first few weeks. I was just like, oh, good hand, play pot. Don't really consider opponents' ranges. And I think that's kind of just how it works when you learn a new game. You know, you, you can't really consider your opponent's ranges too much if you've no idea what people's ranges look like because of your inexperience in the game. This is the easiest limit shove in the world, by the way, this is Jack. Um, so you just got to play the game, get experience, see how certain player types play certain parts of their ranges, etc. And then just get that experience and then just uh, build on it and, and improve on it. And hopefully now you can see that's that's what I'm doing. Hopefully that's coming across. And, um, and you can see just how much progress I am making. 
But he wanted to win it three times here. Had a pull and didn't want to. And perhaps he should have because now he's drawing dead. I'm always going to offer the run it three times if I'm a favourite. Very rarely does it get taken up, but I'm always going to do it. Now, what's happened here? I don't understand what's happened here. Ah, right, I understand what's happened here now. As this guy's gone with a very small raise this time, which I'm going to pay close attention to this hand because he's got his large raise size. He's like, ooh, bang, 90 antis when he's got pocket kings. And all of a sudden, he's gone with like a random 38 chip anti size. I'd very much like to see the showdown here to see just what is going on. Um, now we're out of here because two nits are going to warm. We only have one. We only have one pair. But I really would like this to go to showdown and see his hand. Sadly, we don't. Ace. It certainly wasn't ace ace. We know that much. Zero fold equity against this guy or this guy, so we're just going to take our good odds and try and smash the granny out of a flop. Yeah. If we check here, he goes all in and these two fold, we're going to call. If we check, he goes all in and someone else calls, then we are just going to get out of the way. So we're calling this unless somebody else does. And somebody else does. So we are done. <laughs> Boo. Nine, eight suited. We're going to limp here. Because we've got a passive table that's going to let us see a lot of flops. Apart from this guy, who might just fucking rip 100 antis on us. And if he does, then fuck our lives. This is a very nice situation because I'm very confident this guy's got a pretty damn good hand. And he's given us remarkably enticing odds to try and crack it. It's not the flop we wanted to see, really. But I think if he has, like, aces and kings, etc., he's going to check back at least some of the time and I'm going to go for a double barrel here and try and make this guy fold aces this guy coming along was not part of the plan and now we're just going to, have to check and hope to show down And he did not value bet his rivered full house. Which seems a little bit odd to me, but there you go. Queen 7 off suit. So if you're playing Queen 7 off suit from that position, why is your VP only 58? Surely. If you're playing the Queen 7 from that position, your VP is going to be more than just 58. I'm going to take a stab with that good shot over here. We do not improve any snap called the flop. So we either triple off here or we give up, and I much prefer the giving up option. He had the same hand. My phone just did a vibrating that I've never heard before. Never heard that particular vibration before. Wonder what it's about. Oh, it just seems to be a messenger. My friend just reminding me that you must have added like a no, I'm not sure how the hell he remembers this, but 11 years ago, to this day, 
was the day I must have, I must have been very bored in work this day uh, when I used to work in a laboratory in a, in a detergent factory. It reminded me it's 11 years to the day that I suggested us starting a business, which basically I live on the on the Furnace Peninsula, which is like the southern tip of Cumbria in the UK. If you Google Barrow in Furnace, I don't live in Barrow, I live in the next town up in Dalton, but you'll see whereabouts in the world I live. <clears throat> and um, it's just, a, it's the arse end of nowhere. You know, it takes, like, Markham is just like six miles across the bay, but it takes like 50 minutes to get there in the car. So I was just like bored at work, suggesting to him that maybe we start a business with a hovercraft and we do shuttle runs across the bay to improve transport links between Barrow and Markham. Um, and he just reminded me that it's 11 years to the day since I pitched that business venture to him that, that sadly never got off the ground. Um, maybe now, though. Maybe if we just make short network and we win, like, millions of dollars in the next year or so, maybe we can, um, maybe we can make the hovercraft dream. Maybe we can breathe some life into the hovercraft dream. Not particularly when we're playing heads up against anybody in this game. But unless there's like another table in the lobby, then we're kind of stuck with it. It's a bad river. But we win anyway. Hopefully this table will fill. Ah, there is another table. It scores against every bum hunting bone in my body. <clears throat> to leave someone who's clearly a fish, but it's not major value. So we're going to play this part and then we're going to join the other table. Oh, and I just realised it's a shit table. It's a shit table. That's what it is. So we'll come back and we'll continue playing him. <coughs> uh, but shit table, uh, if you look at the, it's like a 250, you can buy in for 50 antis. And those tables are just some of the most diabolical things in the history of poker tables. Um, so we'll just carry on playing him and hope that the table fills a little bit. My heads up game isn't good. I don't necessarily consider myself a favourite against this guy heads up. But we are playing him because we'd very much like a, a game to form around us. So even if I am maybe taking the worst of it, and I don't think I'm taking the worst of it, but even if I'm not a big favourite in this particular heads up encounter, I don't mind if even if I was slightly taking the worst of it. I don't mind if a table forms around us. It's like... If I'm losing a few antis, a hundred, but it gives chance for more players to join who turn it into a plus EV situation for me, then it's something I'm willing to do. And I hope the Jacks improve somebody here that, to a hand that they can bet. Sadly, it did not, so we couldn't get a check raise in. The question here is, do we limp the ace in this position, hoping that the one last person who can raise, raises? And I don't think we do. I don't think we trust him to raise to get the limp raising. And on Jack 7 7 at this SPR, we're just going to jam the flop because we've got like an SPR of like 1.3 or something like that. And there's just going to be no folding of our hand, I'm afraid. 
And if someone's got us beat, then someone's got us beat. Just the way it's going to have to be. Don't think there's any value but in a bar hand here on this river. Don't think he should be raising seven eight from out of position heads up. Don't think it's don't think it should be a thing. I'd like to play the eight seven, but with two people behind it who are likely to raise and with him not having a full stack, just slides into the fold category. The guy's gone with a bigger than usual raise here. Still can't fold the king queen. We can certainly fold it now. I think we can go with a raise here with the ace queen from this seat. Get limp shoved on, we're gonna fold. Probably going to play for another half an hour. We have a young lady um, staying with us this afternoon that my wife gives respite care to, but my wife's not home from work till 12. And the young lady's coming at half 11. So um, I'll be stopping at about 20 past 11 just so I can be ready for when she arrives in case she arrives early. Feels like it's been a good session so far. Feels like we're going to be up maybe a couple of couple of stacks, but there's twenty minutes. There's half an hour to go, so who knows? That could change dramatically. Um, I'm not going to defend the ace ten suited here. <laughs> limp here and probably I don't know but certainly gonna limp and see what happens a pretty disappointing flop <clears throat> <clears throat> I 
and our friend just lets us walk into the end zone with Ace High, which is just fine by me. Okay, so this table dynamics now changed slightly with the absolute maniac having left. Mm. And now we're getting what we wanted at this table. Sadly, we're not going to have too long to capitalise by keeping this game going heads up against this guy. We are now in a game with three particularly bad players. <clears throat> Don't think this guy is terrible for the record compared to some. It's not mean he's not good. He's clearly not playing a particularly good strategy, but... He's, he wouldn't be at the bottom of the food chain in this in this um, in this pool. And yet another maniac joins. Seems like a really good spot to limp the kings. Sadly, we didn't get the raise pre. And now our kings might already be dust. We're going to ignore the telephone for the time being. Wouldn't be a video from me if the phone didn't ring or someone didn't knock at the door. Ambitious. All we have to say about that call is ambitious. I mean, that one's relatively ambitious. That is, that is the height of ambition. <clears throat> Get a full stack. This will be close to a call, but we're just going to knit it up. This table is wild. They have like three pink tag players, which is nice to see. Look at that flop, we'd have been loving it. We'd have been like a dog with two dicks on that flop. I don't think this is a table where we're going to be seeing too many cheap flops for the duration of the video. 
think these guys are going to be forcing us to gamble a fair amount pre-flop. I kind of want to bluff here, but I'm not going to. Glad we didn't. I'm glad we didn't. This guy does his all-in thing. Then we're just going to have to go with it. Now we're going to limp and hope to limp jam against one of these guys fail that was a failure and kick this off with a small bet and then proceed from there we have an open and straight draw here with the top pair so we're going to want to try and see a turn I think we're just going to keep blocking here. Try and get value from a 10. Instantly get race. Easy fold. Easy fold now. Our straight draw might be dead. Well, our straight draw might have been dead anyway, but given the board's now paired too, and the bet was significantly bigger of an easy fold. No surprises to anyone there that that chap had an eight in his hand. If this, if neither of these two yellow tags raise, then we're going to raise the ace queen and then just not fold it pre flop. SPR of like one and a half. I'm gonna take a free card here. And I hope this guy's got a two pair hand or a set that he can't fold.
limp or raise. Go limpy limpy. <clears throat> maybe when we haven't got the absolute psychopaths behind, maybe it should have been a raise there. Maybe it should have just been a raise. It was close. If this goes on the button, it's a standard limp. Uh, this could be too thin, but we're going to go with another one third bet. And now we're just going to be done with it and get ready with the reload. Nine ten. Happy days. Wouldn't we just love to see some wild action in front of us here? Wouldn't we just love to see it? And we've seen it, all right. Pretend we've got a decision. Oh, not sure what to do. Fuck it, we'll go all in. No red ones, please. Happy days. All in again. Who didn't see that coming? Did have the aces though. It's a good time to pick them up when you look like you're absolutely steaming off your face. It's a good time to pick up the aces for that fellow. Now this guy is likely just a tilt jam. Okay, we're just gonna go with it again. Very vulnerable, our kings here. They are very, very vulnerable. Oh, there's only one ace left in the deck, so that's good to see. That was a nice spot. That was a very nice spot. <clears throat> I mean, if that ace comes there, but I think we can consider ourselves quite unlucky in a like, multi-way all-in. Yeah, I think we've done more than a two-buying session now. Feels like it's going to be at least a four-buying positive session. We've only got ten minutes or so before we're going to wrap it up. Why am I just folding there? What have I just done? I mean, as it happens, I hand rubbish, but I don't know. Don't know what happened there. Tell you what I was thinking, which might have put me off. I was thinking to myself, should we do a giveaway? But I think we'll do that on the next video. That is almost certain my mother, almost certain my mother calling. And with the ringing twice, or potentially being mother, I'll call her back on the mobile. And I shall mute. She'll only be wanting me to confirm what time I'm going to visit her today.
straight to answer phone when I rang mother. So, um, yeah, I'll have to wait for 10 minutes now because I'm not going to piss around. Disappointing that he's put the limb jamming because I would very much have enjoyed seeing a flock with this hand. We would have been in the roughest of rough shape. I understand his limb jam there against this guy, but I don't think I'm in love with it. The ace jack's just a little bit too weak. I know this guy's like pretty manic, but I just don't think ace jack does that fucking well. Because even if he gets it in against ace 10, we know he's like a just 60% favourite against ace 10. He's a 40% underdog to ace king and ace queen. He's a big underdog to like pocket kings, pocket queens, pocket jacks, pocket aces. Now, ace jack's one of those hands that you can see these guys, you think, oh, no, we're doing really well, let's just limp shove against him. But when you get called, you, you, you're almost never a strong favourite, <clears throat> and you are frequently worse than a coin flip. I think we're going to go for a check shove with the Queen Jack. We might already be beat by pocket Queens at King 10 or 10 8, but middle set. I'm going to be happy to play for it all, but I'd rather try and get a check raise in than just bet, be called, and then deal with shit turns. <clears throat> so I'll try and get a check raise, and if we don't, and then we can see a shit turn come off, then fuck our lives. And obviously we're never folding here, but we're just going to take our time a little bit. I mean, I'm not fist pumping here. I don't think it's a fantastic spot by any stretch. You're going to have a hand that has a lot of equity against us if we're not already ahead. If we're not, if we're not already behind, sorry, should I say? And we are behind, but we do get there because today it's apparently our day to win all the flips, or most of them. Interesting spot with the ace king because this guy's just min raised, but all of a sudden now there's 80 chips in the pot, 16 antis. We're just going to try and collect them, or if not, flip for them. This guy's just left already, which is not unpleasant. Oh, we almost got through. We almost got through. We'll go for a run it three times, uh, and he probably won't take it. And now we're just time to win the flip again. No queen. No queen. Beautiful. We have run fucking pure. Absolutely pure today. Cannot deny that. Think when we look in a few minutes' time, it's going to be a big session. Yeah, that's what I was going to talk about was should we do a giveaway if I've won over a certain amount of chips and I was going to say six buy-ins we'll do a giveaway but we'll save the giveaway for the start of the next video I think but it's going to be a giveaway where um, I'm going to give somebody a small amount of buy-ins specifically to play this game just to give someone who's never played it before 
And um, it's not just going to be like a random lottery giveaway. It's going to be... There's going to be a competition element to it in terms of, I don't know, the person who makes the funniest comment or the person who makes the most... I don't want people to beg for it. I don't want like, oh, tell me where you want the buy-in. I don't want that. It's pathetic. You know, please beg for some money. Um, so I'll have a think about it, but it's probably going to be, you know, just... Um, Just try and fill the YouTube video with comments and I'll choose the comment that I like the best. Either it could be the funniest or the most insightful or who knows. Well, I'll give it some thought and we'll do it on Thursday's video, I think. This is going to be a call if he goes all in. It's going to be a limp if he limps. It's going to be another set. Very similar to the the set of jacks right over here. <clears throat> We're happy with that set, but if all the money goes in on the flop, then you know we'd, we'd, we're not going to be in terrible shape most of the time. But our opponents are going to have reasonable equity, you would imagine. Let's see if he wants to run it twice. He probably doesn't, but we'll see if he does. And that's was making it hard for us to win the second one. But we do win both, because as discussed earlier, today is apparently our day to just not lose. Won £350 in the tournament after midnight today, so that counts as today. And then fuck knows how much you've won during this session. We'll find out in about five minutes. I'm calling it now. It's not going to be a losing session. Just seem ashamed to walk away from these tables because I feel fresh. I feel like I've got another two hours in me at least. But um, we'll be taking a break for at least an hour or so till my wife gets home. I think what we're going to do for the rest of the day is um, start this video doing its thing. Wait to greet Ashley and keep her company till my wife gets home. Then we'll go and visit mother. And then we'll come back home. And because my wife's Ashley's care and not myself, um, I'll be able to play some poker again this afternoon. And then at half past three, we'll have to stop again because I'll be going out. I do some voluntary work for Age UK and I'll be delivering some hot meal to some some of our, some of the older people in my community till around 4.30. Then I shall come back home. Shall get my afternoon nap in and then have a nice relaxing evening before playing my midnight session. Good day ahead. Nothing negative on the horizon today. Every part of the plans are things I enjoy doing.
there's no sitting out next blind in these games either, is there? There's just to just play until you want to quit, and I think we probably will now. And we'll go and see how we've done. Because it's 20 past 11 or thereabouts. And it's time I was doing something else, but let's see how we've done for the day. Anyone care to guess? I'm going to guess that we have made 3,200 ships. Wow. That is a nine and a half buy-in uh, session. That is fucking delightful. And that makes us just... I mean, bearing in mind, on yesterday's video, I was, like, ready to, like, 20 buy-ins down for the month. It's been a good couple of days. We've had, in just over a 1,000 hands, uh, we've had a 7, 8,500 ship upswing, 17 buy-in upswing in a 1,000 hands. This game is fucking mental. Absolutely mental. We went from the depths of despair here uh, to just like, yeah, we pretty much offset that in a thousand hands. It's a crazy, crazy game. Very soft, as you've seen, and a lot of fun. Get involved, guys. Just join the just join the short deck revolution and join today. And uh, we'll leave it there, though. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day. We'll be back on Thursday with another live play video and a giveaway. So make sure you catch that video. Take care, everybody. Uh, look after yourselves. Look after people around you as best you can. Stay safe and bye-bye for now.